Hi there, this is Phil with Phil Effects, and I've got another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to talk about animating using a replacement method. And the replacement method is a very key way of doing animation, uh, particularly useful in lip syncing. And uh, anytime that you want to have something that ha where you have multiple drawings and you want to easily swap between those drawings, such as if you have uh, different shaped hands, a different shaped nose, different feet, uh, it's a very simple way to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've got uh, my drawing of my Phoenix Bear and I've gone in and added some uh, enhancements to that drawing. I've got uh, started with an open hand, we've got a closed hand, and now we have a finger pointing. And I've done the same for the left hand as well as the right hand and you can see I've added these layers so I have a right hand pointing, right hand closed, right hand open, left hand pointing, left hand closed, and left hand open. So let's go ahead and import that. So if I go and double click here, get our books and bear, look at my options. I'm going to bring this in and retain layer sizes and say open. And that brings that in. And what it does is that we have this whole uh, composition with our bear here. And here's the bear with the hands. So what we want to do, I'm just going to do the left hand here. and. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to grab the drawings of the different layers. In this case, we have three different hand layers. So I'm going to hand drawing. So I'm going to grab all three of those and go up to layer. And we want to pre-compose that. What we're going to do is make a new composition with just those hands, hand drawings. So I say pre-compose and I'm going to call this left underscore hand. And we're going to move all the attributes into that composition and double click and here's my left hand so here's our three drawings and let me drag these over zoom this up just a little bit so you can see the drawings of the left hand and the first thing we need to do is you can see that the uh, anchor point for each of these drawings uh, is in the center which is what you would expect but that's actually not where we want it we actually want the center of rotation for the hands to be up here where uh, you would expect that hand rotation to, to occur. So we want to go in, use our pan behind tool. So we grab the pan behind tool and I take that anchor point and I put it there. I click on the next layer, put that anchor point there, the next layer and put the anchor point right there. So let's be sure to, uh, let's drop that anchor point to or the pan behind tool, go back to our selection tool and that looks pretty good. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to overlay each of these hands on top of each other. And we want to do it such that when we switch from one drawing to the next, we don't want to see any visible jumping of uh, the drawing. All right. You just want to make it look like, in this case, the fingers get shorter and the thumb kind of disappears. So I'm going to put this and just make a guess. And this is the left hand closed and the left hand open. So let's hide the pointing for the moment. And I have the hand closed sitting on top of the hand open. And let me just switch those. And I'm getting a little bit of a jump. So let me go in and maybe move that down. Okay, that looks pretty good. So really all I'm seeing is the hand doesn't change its position it just the fingers get shortened and the thumb kind of disappears that's the look i'm looking for all right so then let's uh get the hand pointing we'll take that put that on top and the same kind of thing when it disappears and we move between it we don't want to see the hand jump we just want to see the fingers extend and that looks pretty good for that all right so we have these all uh oriented correctly and now there's a few more things we need to correct okay so the first thing we need to correct is that the size of the composition uh, is incorrect and we want the size of this composition to be uh, the size of the hands and there's a simple way to do that let me zoom in here and we go down here and we use a tool in the composition window called region of interest so I put my mouse over it so that would highlight the hint there. We click on that and I just start to draw a rectangle and I'm drawing a rectangle around those hands. And I want to make the size of the rectangle essentially the size of the hands and no bigger. 
because that's how big I want my composition to be, not that big size we saw before. So we go in there and do that, then we go up to composition and we say crop the comp to the region of interest. And I click on that and now you can see the comp is just as big as that region of interest that I defined. All right, the next thing you'd want to do in this particular case, because I went through this before and After Effects remembered what I did, it made the composition only three frames long. When you do this for the first time, it probably won't be three frames long. Uh, for the sake of argument, I'm gonna go in and change this to what this used to be. And let's say that this was 60 frames long. So the comp is 60 frames long and the hands actually should have been the same length as 60 frames if I made it initially and that's how big everything was so typically what you're probably going to see when you do th something is it's not going to be three frames long it'll be 100 frames 60 frames whatever your previous setup was the point I'm trying to make here is we have three drawings we have three layers we really only want this left hand comp to be three frames long so the way that you change that is you change it exactly the way that I just changed it back. So we right click on hand, go to composition settings, and we make the duration, duration three frames. So I click three, hit enter, say okay, and now my comp is three frames long. Uh, the next thing we want to do, we want the duration of each layer only to be one frame long. So I can go in and drag this one and drag that one and drag that one and now the length of each layer in terms of its visibility is it's only visible for one frame and the last thing we need to do is take each one of these and we want to stagger them why do we stagger them well if I take my playhead and now at time zero we see the hand pointing at frame one we see the hand closed and at frame two we see the hand open so as we move the playhead, we only see one of the drawings. So we accomplish that by, again, making each drawing only one frame long and staggering them. So now that we've done that, we're all set. This pre-comp of the left hand is complete and we can use it. So let's go to our Books and Bear and move this over here. And I have a left hand drawing and I don't want to use that for this animation. So I'm just going to turn that off. I want to use my left hand pre-comp. So I'm going to grab my pre-comp for the left hand, drag that down here and put that in. And we don't see it because the playhead's way out here. Now I bring that in. So there's my left hand. <coughs> So a couple things we need to do first, uh, let's zoom in and again, anchor points in the wrong position. If we want to be able to rotate this comp, we want that anchor point to be right about up here. So let's get our pan behind tool, take that anchor point, move it to the location that we want. All right, go back, get our selection tool, take the hand, position it to where we want. And the rotation on that may not look exactly right, so what I want to do is I want to go in and actually rotate that just a little bit. So I have the layer selected, I type R, and let me move that just a little bit. That looks a little better. It wasn't a lot, but just a little bit. So now we have the hand, it's rotated, it's positioned correctly, and uh, now we want to be able to animate this. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to be able to do, first off, you can go in and you can see that, well, the hand disappears after three frames. So that's because this hand comp is only three frames long. So we need to be able to figure out a way to extend this so I could make this longer than three frames. You see when I click and drag, it's, it's not moving. So what you do, the way you do that is you use time remapping. So I right click on left hand, I go up to time and I say enable time remapping. And now, after Effects has gone in and it's put in two keyframes and I can grab this and I can drag this all the way out to the length of my composition. Okay, so we drag it out to the length of the composition. Uh, the second keyframe that it puts in, I don't need, so I can click on that and hit delete. The first keyframe, it defaults by putting in a linear keyframe. That's in your presets. Uh, I really want that to be a hold keyframe. So I can right click on that 
say toggle hold keyframe so now it's a hold keyframe and now we're set to do our animation uh, one last note uh, I like working with uh, displaying frames not uh, time codes so you can change that if you have a time code up here uh, if you hold on the command key on a Mac or control on Windows and then right click the mouse this will toggle so now we have a time code here so we got hours minutes seconds and frames I click it again and I have just frames uh, I really like just seeing frames especially when I'm doing a replacement animation so we have the hand here and uh, it's displaying pointing now remember if we go to the left hand pointing is frame zero right closed is frame one open is frame two so we'll go back to here and let's say at frame 10 I want the hand to be closed and closed was uh, frame number one so I click on here in my time remap and I just type in one and the hand closes now because these are hold keyframes if I go to frame 9 I have the other frame or the other uh, drawing so it stays frame 0 in my remapped left hand composition up until I change it I changed it on frame 10 so it stays the same value for 0 through 9 and then at frame 10 we change it all right uh, let's go up to frame 20 and let's change this to uh, frame 2 and enter that and I have an open hand go to frame 30 go back to frame 0 and now the hands pointing so you can see I can easily animate the different drawings simply by changing the frame number and sometimes you know if you have a lot of things like when you're doing lip syncing it helps maybe to have a cheat sheet so you can remember you can see up here with the mouth because I am doing an animation it's changing quite a bit and there's eight different drawings for the mouth and so sometimes it helps to maybe have a cheat sheet uh, but you can easily animate using the repl replacement method and it's a very quick way to do things so things such as eyebrows uh, feet noses obviously a mouth for doing lip syncing hands or if you have uh, multiple objects and you just want to be able to change between multiple objects in a scene and but have them replaced in exactly the same place this is a very fast and efficient way to do it so hopefully this helps you out in doing a replacement animation this has been phil with phil effects thanks a lot